Hi, I'm Zhao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about a case of Prince Metals Angina causing cardiac arrest. Our patient is a 50-year-old woman uh, who presented to the ER with chest pain. Other than smoking and anxiety, her only medical history is a long history of intermittent chest pain that she has always attributed to her panic attacks. She had several stress tests over the years that have all been negative. In the ER, her ECG and vitals were unremarkable. Her chest pain was actually down to one out of 10 after a sublingual nitroglycerin. Her troponin was initially negative, uh, but then rose to 0 0.312, uh, which was borderline positive. Cardiology was consulted and recommended treatment for ACS uh, with a plan for cath the following day. So she was admitted to the cardiac telemetry unit and initially had a fairly uneventful night. She had no chest pain or dyspnea. But at around six o'clock the next morning, uh, the monitor tech called the nurse in an alarm because of several runs of marked ST elevations on the telemetry monitor. You can see some of them here. Each run lasted less than one to two minutes and then spontaneously resolved. The nurse uh, ran into the patient's room uh, who was sitting there just fine, uh, wondering what all the commotion was about. She was completely asymptomatic. So the nurse called the on-call cardiologist. He said he suspected that she had Prince medals, uh, but decided to call in the cath lab anyway. So the patient was moved to the uh, cath lab prep area and uh, she uh, continued to feel fine. Uh, the initial ECG was normal. Then, uh, as we were explaining the cardiac cath procedure to the patient and her husband, the monitor showed that her ST segments was uh, going back up as she had been doing all morning. Initially, she felt fine, uh, but this time the STs stayed up. And as we're there incredulously looking at that monitor, her blood pressure came back at 75 over 40, and we saw that she was now in complete heart block. She also now said that she was starting to feel a little bit dizzy. We started fluids, put her in Trendelenburg, and called out to the cath lab out back that we were coming over right now. We uh, quickly got a 12 lead, uh, which showed dramatic infralateral ST elevations, as well as complete heart block. The patient was fading. Over the next few minutes, as we're uh, transferring the patient into the cath lab, uh, she became unresponsive. We could no longer feel a pulse. Uh, she was in PEA. We uh, called the code. We started chest compressions. Uh, she got wide open fluids, epinephrine, atropine. Then she went into VT, and then VF. Uh, she was defibrillated twice, uh, got the amiodarone IV push, more chest compressions, more epinephrine. She was intubated. We were obviously suspecting, uh, suspecting Prince metals, and she also got uh, magnesium IV push. Uh, 20 people were in the cath lab prep area for the code, and unfortunately, this was all in plain view of the outpatients uh, who were walking in, arriving uh, for their elective uh, cath procedures. We finally got ROSC after what felt like an interminable 15 minutes. Her post ros ECG showed a widened QRS pattern uh, with persistent inferior ST elevations. Uh, she was moved for, over to the cath lab. So on cath, the LED did not have significant disease, although the mid to distal segment appeared small. The left circ was fine proximally. Um, the OM2 uh, had a long, narrowed segment, uh, but uh, there was TIMI3 flow. And here's the RCA. It has a truly striking appearance. Um, the RCA is fine proximally, but distally it appears to be severely vasoconstricted uh, with a segment of subtotal occlusion. The PDA uh, was actually completely occluded. We uh, quickly gave intracoronary nitroglycerin and nicardipine. Uh, this relieved some of the constriction and some flow returned uh, to the PDA. Uh, this concern, uh, confirms our suspicion that this was a severe case of Prince metals, uh, which is also known as vasospastic or variant angina. The distal RC was still quite vasoconstricted, so we decided to pass a priority one thrombectomy catheter into the distal RCA and use the aspiration port to infuse vasodilators more directly uh, to the distal RCA. The same technique is also useful for no reflow. 
Uh, repeat Andrew showed no significant change in the constriction, however, so we decided to use a, uh, the Clearway uh, drug weeping balloon uh, to drip vasodilators into the distal RCA directly at the site of the spasm. Uh, the Clearway balloon is really not very often used anymore, but the micropores uh, nature of the balloon uh, provides a way to administer intracoronary medications over a more sustained period of time. For, for, for instance, you can use it to give vasodilators uh, for no reflow or spasm, or uh, give uh, TPA or 2B3A inhibitors for highly thrombotic lesions. And uh, here is the uh, final angiographic result after administration of all the uh, intracoronary vasodilators. Um, there is still some residual vasoconstriction, but the RCA does appear to be much improved uh, with the restoration of TIMI3 flow. So the patient was admitted to the ICU. Uh, fortunately, her echo showed a normal LV function. And after a two-day hospitalization, uh, she was discharged on a calcium channel blocker and a long-acting nitrate. But our story doesn't end here. Because one month later, uh, she came back. Now, this time, uh, she had a brief syncopal episode after another episode of chest pain. In the ER, she looked completely benign. Her ECG was normal, her troponin uh, was negative. Her tox screen uh, was also negative. But because of what just happened to her one month ago, uh, she was sent directly to the cath lab. And on cath, the PDA uh, does appear constricted proximally, but otherwise the RCA looked fine. Uh, there was TIMI3 floor everywhere. And the LED looked okay as well. Uh, the circumflex actually looks completely fine too. The stenosis that we saw last month in the OM2 was therefore also just spasm. Uh, she was already on a calcium channel blocker and on nitrates, uh, which she says uh, she has been uh, very compliant with. So uh, we were concerned that she had another episode of vasospastic angina, uh, this time possibly uh, with VT uh, that caused her syncope. So we sent her to, the, uh, to EP uh, for uh, ICD implantation. So Prince Metals angina is not very common, uh, but as this case illustrates, uh, the presentation can be quite dramatic. Uh, it is also known as vasospastic angina or variant angina. The uh, characteristic feature uh, is an abnormal vasoconstrictive response, uh, which can be focal or, as in our case, uh, affect the multiple vascular beds. The, the mechanism is not completely clear. Um, there are many known triggers. Uh, anxiety and hyperventilation are classic, but stimulants, alcohol, stress can also cause it. Uh, magnesium deficiency uh, is also thought to play a role. And importantly, uh, beta blockers uh, can trigger and worsen the situation. Uh, smoking is a risk factor, and it also seems that uh, other vasospastic conditions such as Raynaud's or migraines are also risk factors. So how do you treat Prince metals? Well, um, there is not a lot of data, but there are a few things that seem to make sense. Uh, first, avoid the trigger. Uh, stop smoking, avoid alcohol, reduce stress. Uh, consider magnesium supplementation. The first line treatment is calcium channel blockers. Uh, both uh, dihydropyridine and non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers uh, work. The second line treatment is uh, nitrates, and these are usually used in addition uh, to uh, calcium channel blockers. Statins uh, may have some benefit uh, for preventing spasm, uh, but the data is scant. Uh, the evidence for ICD is also lacking, but certainly it may be reasonable in select cases, such as uh, our patient, uh, to prevent the sudden cardiac death. Now, what doesn't work? Well, aspirin does not seem to be beneficial for Prince metals and theoretically may actually aggravate spasm. Beta blockers uh, should be avoided uh, for patients with Prince metals. Uh, they can cause unopposed alpha-mediated coronary vasoconstriction and possibly trigger or worsen the condition. If a patient uh, truly needs to be on a beta blocker for whatever reason, uh, then choose labetalol or carvedilol uh, beta blockers with uh, alpha blocking act activity. All right, uh, take home messages. Uh, coronary vasoconstriction due to Prince metals uh, can be focal or diffuse. Uh, patients can get angina, dramatic ST elevations, uh, or even cardiac arrest, as our case uh, illustrates. Uh, treatments are calcium channel blockers and nitrates. Uh, severe refractory cases may need to go to the cath lab uh, for direct uh, intracoronary vasodilators. An ICD can be considered uh, for prevention of uh, sudden cardiac death. And remember to avoid uh, beta blockers in Prince Metals patients. 
and if a beta blocker is absolutely necessary, then use one with uh, alpha blocking activity, uh, such as Libelli law or Carveda law. Thank you for watching.